show on Twitch where you, the viewers, are in control. Featuring special guests from all over the Twitch community and the Los Angeles comedy scene. Enter a variety of wild scenarios with colorful characters and help steer the story in whatever direction you want. You can vote in polls to make choices, submit images over Twitter and Discord. You can pay to play sound effects. Road ends in 100 feet. What the f***? It's your show too, friend. Hop on in and experience everything now. Hello! Welcome! Thank you, thank you. It's me, your boy, Jonks. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that's very sweet of you, Council. Welcome! Welcome, if you're new here, my name is Jonks. I'm a almighty wish-granting demigod. I live at the top of this mountain top. The top of this mountain top. Bit of a redundancy there. I live at the top of this mountain. Travelers come from far and wide to have their wishes granted. But ultimately, it is up to you, the Council of Jonks, in the chat, who will decide their fate. Yes. Yes, if you are in the chat, you are part of the Council of Jonks. I see some familiar council members here this evening. Sentinel, Abby Sally, Siloth, Naked Comedy Scott with too many T's, Sadville, Fulaloof, Placid Moose, Sunbro. Welcome. Welcome. And if you're new here, I pretty much just explained the, the gist of it. People will come to my mountaintop, they'll ask for their wish to be granted. We'll ask them some questions, we'll try to kind of suss out their general vibe. And then if you think they are worthy of having their desires realized, you can vote for that to be so. However, if you find that a traveler is unworthy, you can vote not to grant their wish. And if you decide that a traveler is particularly unworthy, for five dollars, you can sacrifice them to me, and I will devour them blood, flesh, and bone. Okay, man. Yes. Throw your kill emotes up in the council. You'll notice there's a graphic in the top left corner that says sacrifice for $5. That's what that means. There are also a few other ways that you can help to interview these travelers as they arrive. We can phone a friend. Can we bring in the phone booth for a second? The magical phone booth. Using the sound alerts, you can trigger the magical phone booth at any time. And we'll talk to somebody from the traveler's life. Whoa! Thank you so much, Abby Sally, for the gifted sub. For the gifted sub, you will get an entry into our guest book. A boo for her, I guess the guest book? I don't know. This is the Junk's guest book. If you subscribe at any point tonight, you can make an entry into the guest book. We have some entries from the last time here. I fight for them said, The VRBO where I'm staying recommends the human sacrifice as a local attraction. The trail up to Junk's was well maintained. Four out of five would recommend. And there were some other ones in there, but you get the idea. Abby Sally, thank you so much for the gifted subscription. Let us know what you'd like to add to our guest book. We'll add it and then we'll show it on stream. And that goes for everybody else. If you subscribe, you can let us know what you want to put in the guest book. We'll write it in there and then we'll show it on screen. Uh, those are the main things. One other thing worth mentioning. The Everything Now show is up for an award. Three awards, actually. Yes, the 2023 Streamer Awards are happening at some point. I don't know exactly when, but it's soon. Type exclamation point awards in the chat and vote for Everything Now Show. Your votes could get us a nomination. 
and that will lead to clout. And I live on clout, baby. Jocks, what if somebody in line wished to, to, for the show to win the award? Well, that would be really helpful. Seems like a very selfless wish, and I, I don't mean to have such a low opinion of the travelers, but I would be shocked if someone were to have such a generous wish. Usually it's like, bring my dead mom back, or something lame like that. But if you want to be really cool, wish for the Everything Now Show to win an award. Go vote for us in the categories, Hidden Gem. And then there's two other ones that I can't remember. Hidden Gem is the main one I think that we're going for. Rising Stars might be one of them. And then, like, League of Their Own, I think. It's just vote for... Just to be safe, vote for us in everything. Can't hurt to just vote for us for everything. Anyway, folks, that's how it works. You get the idea. I think I see a traveler making their way up my mountaintop right about now. Hello! Okay, alright. Hey I'm ready. Let's do it. Yes, traveler, you've made it. You've, you've conquered my mountaintop, and your reward is to ask for a wish to be granted. It wasn't that bad. Oh, I'm glad. Some people really I the, uh, complain. It's like the diagonal elevator. The oh, did they get the that? The funicular. We got the funicular installed? Yeah. Oh, that was my pretty gosh. Good. They kept good. talking about that. We had a lot of construction issues. It was like the weather and then a whole union thing. I uh, try to stay out of that stuff. Hey, you. You're not a union guy? Well... It's a complicated issue, but sure. that's not why I'm here today. Okay, well, why? first of all, Traveler, what is your name? I'm Dr. Ishmael Pancakes. Dr. Ishmael Pancakes. Hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for journeying here today, Doctor. Sure. Dr. Dr. Can, Pancakes, what is it? we can help each it? other out here. Oh, yeah, well, you, that's interesting. Usually I just help out the Traveler, but you... What, do you have some sort of offer to make me? what I want, then maybe I'll help you out. You'll be on my side in a bar fight, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's sort of, it's sort of tricky for me to go out to bars, but I, and if it's a euphemism, then yes, I might support you. Tell me, Dr. Pancake, what is that in your hand? Oh, this here's a work thing. That's a work thing? This is work thing. It looks like a human skull. This guy's name was Glenn or something? Or something. Yeah. You don't remember? God, he just yap, yap, yap about his favorite TV shows. I would bring him in, and I'd try to check his nose and throat, and he would just keep on talking about this Ted Lasso. He's a big Ted Lasso guy? Was. Certainly was. was. Right, sure was. This what was happened? a coincidence, though, I'll say. A coincidence? Yeah. That his naked skull is in your hand now? Yeah, it was a long story, but, you know, short of as he tripped and fell. Ah, the old trip and fall. What can you do? Tripped and fell out of his skin. Basically. I see. Well, Dr. Pancake, I'm not here to inquire about your business. I'm here to inquire about your desires. What is it that you've come to my mountaintop domain to wish for? Thank you very much, Jonks. I'm here for that little 007 badge. The 007 privilege. Um, you're going to have to be more specific. <laughs> what does that mean? I, well, I believe the, the political term is diplomatic immunity. Ah, you want diplomatic immunity. I guess I want to define this a little bit more. I want to be able to choose who lives and dies in my hospital. Ah. And also to not have any legal repercussions for it. I see. So, and you're giving yourself a round of applause. Okay. You hear the people. Yeah, it does sound like some of the people in the line are into that. Now here, Dr. Pancake, it sounds to um, me- Pancakes. Sorry. Excuse me, Dr. Pancakes. Oh, what are we doing here? I are you see we just got. Me? Oh, and absolutely not. I respect your craft, Dr. Pancakes, and thank you, Scott, with too many T's for the gifted subscription. Let us know what you'd like to put in the guest book. Dr. Pancakes, if I understand correctly, you're saying that your desire is not something like saving every life in your hospital, but that you have the ability to kill wantonly without regard for any sort of moral compass and that you have no consequences or repercussions for your actions legally or otherwise is that am i getting the gist of it that's a little blunt that's a little blunt i'm just trying to that's literally what i'm asking for right Jones? that's literally what i'm asking for now as a doctor wouldn't it be nice to just wish that no one in your hospital ever died and therefore you? oh would my be... god please no okay death is a natural part of life some people need to reach it sooner that's an interesting... Isn't the whole Hippocratic Oath or whatever about, like, 
I gotta try to save these bitches or I forget the exact hungry, words. Hungry hungry hippo is more like it. <laughs> hungry that's why I say people bring up the Hippocratic oath and they say more like hungry hungry hippos. And they feel like idiots for bringing it up in front of my face. I see. You sound like a fool right now, jokes. Well, I I just I'm just trying to get a general idea of what your goals and ambitions are, Dr. Pancakes. Now, I I do want to open it up to uh the guest book really quickly. I think we've got a few entries here that I want to take a look at and doctor if you want to see what these say as well. It says Sure thing. Naked Comedy said Climb the mountain, but I think I went wrong, uh, the wrong way. I just see a big butt. It isn't granting my wish. Ah, yes. I think, uh, oh, and we're... I think we got the gist of that one, pretty much. For the record, you've got a beautiful ass, Jonks. Thank you, yeah, I think, uh... I think we need to get the signage more clear, because I've been getting that a lot recently, where people think that they're in line to come have their wish granted, and they're actually in line to see the display of my giant ass on the other side of this mountain, which, uh -huh. although it is glorious, it's about a three mile hike out of the way. So, sorry yes. about that, Naked Comedy. I hope you at least got a good look. Anyway, Dr. Pancakes, I did want to open it up to our council to see if they have any questions about you or your wish. So council members in the chat, if you have any questions for Dr. Pancakes, please go ahead. Now is the time to ask. And I, I guess I'll start with uh, Dr. Pancakes. Do you have a specialization? Are you like a surgeon or an anesthesiologist or something like that? Jack of all trades, master of all is what I am. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do it all, baby. Mostly surgery. Mo okay, mo so like a surgeon. Yeah. Okay. I guess you'd call me that, sure. I guess, yeah. Uh, here's a question uh, from council member Sadville PM. Okay. They would like to know, can we quickly have this guy say, what's the deal? What's the deal with that? Why would he want me to say that? All right, I think we got it. Thank you. I'm a little offended. For the gifted sub, Sarah, dance painter. Please let us know what you'd like to add to the guest book. Uh, we had another question here from a council member, uh, Java Vision, who says, is he willing to renounce his heretical last name and change, oh, I just missed the end of that, but what I think the gist of it, are you are you willing to change your last name from Pancakes? And if you were, what would you change it to? Why is that a problem? You know, I'm not actually sure. People they, are racist these days. You think it's racist? These Gen Zers are so racist. Can you elaborate on why you feel it's racist? Oh, my people, you know, like Shoemaker, that, that person's family was making of shoes when they were growing up, you know? Generations and generations. I got generations Explain of pancake this makers. Behavior. And I'm proud of it. I see. I don't know if I totally make the racism connection with that, but I really don't want to push it. Anyway, we've got some odd behavior here that we're going to need you to explain. Can it's we? probably, is a 80% possibility that it's racist. Let's, uh... Let's show this odd behavior. Who do I have to? What do I have to explain for? Oh, I'm proud well, of everything we're show that I've it in done. Just a second, actually. But in the meantime, while we're getting that behavior prepared, we have a question here from Council Member. Why did no one tell me I got something on my forehead? Oh well, that's interesting because this question is related to that. Is there something under your hat? Four hours in line with these jerks, and none of them said a thing. Hey, we were hitting it off, man. I know. I was having a lot of fun, but now I'm feeling like you're an enemy. Dr. Pancakes, is there anything under your hat? No. Should there be? I, I, it's just a question from the council. I can't believe I'm about to do this, but, uh, a little transparency. Oh. It's actually quite a nice head of hair you've got there. Yeah. And I feel, you know what? I've stopped this this hairline from going back even further. Uh, it took a lot of work. You know, very, like, micro-blading, I believe is the term. They use it mostly for eyebrows, but, uh... If you do it on your hairline, you create the illusion that your hair is more forward than it actually is. And what's the deal with hair plugs these days? Doesn't that- Do you do that a lot? What? Do you go on rants about what the deal with things are? Sure! Plenty of time at the hospital. And do you think- A lot of dead air. I'm just gonna kinda ask outright, do you know of anyone else who happens to do that? Other doctors? No. That's what makes me special, I think. Oh yeah, I know who does, and someone asked about it. My 17-year-old girlfriend does. <laughs> okay. Alright, we've got some we've got some unusual behavior for you to explain that I, I'm hoping 
is unrelated to your 17-year-old girlfriend. Me let's, too. She's innocent. Let's go ahead and... she's and, studying for her midterms. Let's take a look at this unusual behavior. Now, what is it okay, that's going on here, Dr. Right. Pancakes? Sure. I went into business with the tipsy bartender. I'm not proud of it. That guy makes some great videos. I gotta say, you can't deny that, but... Uh, Surely as a doctor, you should know that these concoctions are terrible for your health. Actually, you'd be surprised on where some of the best and most uh, potent medicines come from these days. You're saying that there's medicinal qualities to a, what appears to be a giant tub of cheese balls that's, coated in vodka? That's Walmart grade, no, food for less grade cheese balls filled to the brim with some vodka, I believe. And uh, that actually cured a, gli a guy's blindness. That believe, cured his blindness. Is that the method not. that Mr. Beast used? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. I, uh, yeah. I do go into business with some YouTubers as well, as you can tell from the tipsy bartender. So you just give him some cheese ball vodka, hit him in the head a couple times, and then boom, make it see. Well, you know, I didn't go to med school, so I, unfortunately, I will have to trust you on that. But, uh, we are going to get someone on the phone, uh, to, right. from your past here. Dr. Pancake, so if you explain this stand odd behavior, back, we're gonna bring in. Hands up the phone on the ground, booth. what do I do? It's a 17 year old girl right now. Let's bring in the phone booth, please. Sweetie. You should be working on your PowerPoint right now. And make sure the phone is turned on. Alright, I understand that this is your 17 year old girlfriend on the line. Hi, comes. Hey, what's up? Oh, nothing. Just on a work trip. Oh, <sighs> jonks. I'm working on my PowerPoint about geodes. Oh, that's great, sweetie. Now, are those the ones that are coming from below or from above? You know, that's kind of why I was calling. I don't really understand it, and I was hoping, like, you're a scientist, so I was hoping you could help me. You know, actually, while I am a scientist with a doctorate in love, as we've discussed, I'm actually talking to a guy who's a specialist in rocks. Hey, hey, Johns, are geodes the one that come from the ground or come from the ceiling? Uh, I think you're thinking of stalagmites and stalactites. Oh, yeah! Geodes do come from the ground, though, in the way that, like, all most geological features do. Like potatoes. Hey, hey, honey, I'm hanging out in your living room working on my PowerPoint, and your neighbor just burst through the door and started eating your cereal. Is that okay? He does that. I buy the extra boxes just because I know he's going to do that. Okay, and it's fine? He could just be here while it's you're not, not home? Right. Has he said anything? He kind of, he's, I don't know. He's said some things I don't feel comfortable repeating. Yeah? Is he having a bad day? I think he thinks he's being funny right now, yeah. but it is not playing. It's not fun. Put, put me on speaker. <laughs> Stop hey. it. Buddy, hey, stop it. Up? It's not funny. Stop it. I really feel like this is going to land. Let it's me do not five funny. minutes of it it's longer. It's not funny. All right, all right. Hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Okay. Step away from the phone. I forgot to ask what she's wearing. Uh -huh. Yeah, I guess uh, you can figure that out when you go back. All right, we've got one more bit of unusual behavior for you to explain, Dr. Pancakes, and then I think... We're going to go ahead and put it to a vote for the council to decide if what your is wish this, is granted. the number burger trials? Come the, on. <laughs> the number burger trials? It's Nuremberg. You're a burg. All right. All right. What's going on here, Dr. Pancakes? Can you explain this? This was my job before I entered the medical field. I was an editor for children's books. You edited this? This? I don't think this... Berenstein Bears book ever made it to publishing, did with, it? I worked with the Berenstain Bears, yes. Oh, Berenstain be Bears. Berenstain. Got it. Maybe that's why I didn't recognize this particular title. Exactly. Berenstain was for the, 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 the curious child who's entering adolescence, like 13 years old and whatnot. I see. And titles like Get Kicked in the Dick is yeah. supposed to what? Like prepare them for... Numbers and colors and stuff. Numbers and Sharing. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to say, like, you know, playground. Holding ground. mommy's hand at the grocery store, that kind of baby crap. Okay. What happens when you're a young bear and you get kicked in the dick? You fight back. Okay, well, spoiler alert. We actually... Uh, we can get rid of that. We did this before Captain Underpants. You know those flip rama pages. I remember those, yes. Papa Bear is doing, giving the world a turtle, you know? Just doing that for about 30 pages. Wow. I see. And then you left the book publishing world to become a... 
medical doctor. That's right. It's an interesting career path, Dr. Pancakes, and I wish we could learn more about it, but I do think it is time now to get the poll up for our council to vote. That's all? I think we need to Phew. remind... We'll, we'll need to remind our council because we covered a lot of ground. Uh, but the, can you actually just remind us what the gist of your wish was? Oh, yeah, sure. I, Dr. Ishmael Pancakes, would like to be legally cleared of all charges when I let people die in my hospital. Keyword let. Let's, let's, call, it, let's call it what it is, folks. Thank you, Bogey Orangutan, for following. Yeah, thanks, Bogey. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's it. You want basically, like, to be able to... Well, it's sort of a... Maybe a, a semantic difference, but is the idea that you want to let people who are already dying die, or do you want to actively... It's sort of like manslaughter versus, you know, first-degree felony murder. Like Case-to-case case case basis, you know? Kind you of, just want impunity for basically everything. People are so unique, you know? There's just, like, a... There's, there's a beautiful, diverse world. And you don't know who you would want alive versus who you'd think, eh, we're good. We can just let them, you know, they're fine. They've done their duty. Got it. We don't need this guy around anymore. All right, well, our council is now going to decide whether or not your wish is granted. Council members- I feel members, like I have a good judge of character, you know? You certainly are a character. Uh, What's that supposed to Maybe it takes one to know one. Ah, hey, you're just kind of a wacky guy. You just kind of seem sort of like a wacky guy to me. You tell that to everyone with the last name Pancakes? You know what? I <laughs> I feel like you're the only one who I've met with the name last name Pancakes. So, yes, I guess technically every person I've met with the name Pancakes I've called the wacky wow. guy. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, do you get in trouble for eating all those people? No, actually, that I get to do that with impunity because... Well, uh, well, well. Because it's not my decision. The council does that. Do they get in trouble? You'd have to ask them. All right, I think we're ready to go ahead and close out that poll. And oh, I am so sorry, Dr. Hey Pancakes. Now. Come on. It appears that our council has decided to deny your wish to be able to kill and let people die with diplomatic immunity. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that, Doc. You're just going to have to, I guess, save people's lives like a normal doctor or get sued for malpractice. You know, I can concoct a series of, you know, mishaps and uh, oopsums to let some people go. That's what I've been doing, and I just wanted to kind of get the legal tape off of it, but right. I guess I'll have to just create more slapstick scenarios uh -huh. in which I accidentally let somebody go. Got anyway, it. Anyway, can I dispose of this here? Uh, dispose of what? Sorry, I can't see what you're... This thing can we go back to the wide? Right here. Working on it. Uh... Oh, the skull. The skull that you're holding. Yeah, the skull I'm holding in my hand. Can you get rid of it? Can I just leave this here? Uh, I'd rather you not. Come on. I suppose I can't really stop you, I've but... seen you burp up legs. <laughs> That's true. I see you burp up legs. I, I think I'd rather you not leave that here, but I, like I said, I can't stop you. I just feel like it might sort of be off-putting to whomever comes you might, you might after still have, you. You might still have some meat on the bone. That's really gross. Kind of like a wing. Oh. Oh. Pardon me, I've got some gas. Usually I have purple leg when I have it. Right. Oh, oh, there God. it goes. Oh. Delayed reaction there. Sometimes it gets caught in my throat. Thanks anyway, that, sorry about that, Dr. Pancakes. I'm going to have to ask you now to go back down the mountain. I've got a, a long line of travelers behind you. All right. I guess I'll go to the bathroom. Okay. What is that, like a catchphrase or something? I don't know what's happening now. It kind of sounds like the Seinfeld theme a little bit. I'm hearing that. Okay, they should have cut away from me now. Yeah, I thought you would. I thought you were just gonna leave. I'm freeze framing. Oh, what I that see. That guy says right there. Yeah, you're freeze framing. All right, I'm kind of done all doing right. this character. Oh, yep. So. All right, cool. Yep. <laughs> I think you're pretty much done. All right. That's all I had in my iPhone notes. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, our first traveler of the night, wish denied. And that's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes we grant them. Sometimes they go home empty-handed. Sometimes they go home no-handed because I eat their hands because you've sacrificed them to me. And that's, those are kind of the three main options. 
Anyway, if you're just joining us, my name is Junks. I live at the top of this mountain. I grant wishes. Travelers journey from far and wide to ask me to grant their wish. But of course, it's not up to me to grant these wishes. It's up to you, the now Council of Junks. Uh, oh, we've got another entry in the guest book. Let's have a look at that. Ah, Sarah Dance Painter said, What is this? What is happening? I don't know what's going on, help. Thank you, Sarah Dance Painter, for your entry. And it's actually, coincidentally, I was pretty much just explaining that when we cut away to look at your entry. But this is Jonks, or rather, I am Jonks. And this is my mountaintop domain. As I was saying, travelers come from far and wide to have their wishes granted, but it's up to you, the council, to vote and determine whether their desires are realized. Last time, you decided not to grant Dr. Pancake's wish to have diplomatic impunity, immunity, and let his patients die on the operating table. But I think I see another traveler making their way up the, the mountain right now, and perhaps this one will fare better. <laughs> Hello, traveler. Uh, Welcome. Hello. Um, Please state your name, traveler. My, my name is John Gentle. John Gentle. John Gentle, what is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? <sighs> well, it's quite the hike, I guess. I gotta say. It's... I get that a lot, yeah. yeah. We gotta make it tough, you know? It's like wish granting and stuff. If it was easy, everybody'd be up here, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, my, I guess my biggest wish would be a couple. No. Oh, be careful. <laughs> be careful. Um, well, uh, I, I, I guess I should give a little background about why I chose this wish. Sure. And the adventure that brought me here. Okay. Um, I don't need your whole like life story, but if you want to just give me the gotta clip notes. got to go back notes. to the 19... Reason. Um, I was born in Passaic, New Jersey at St. Mary's Hospital. Okay. And, uh, you know, my my mother, single mother, which uh -huh. was scandalous back in the day. Sure. Uh, it was a different time. Yeah, well, she was raising me, and I spent a lot of time by my lonesome. Uh, but my favorite thing every week was watching the show MASH. MASH! Thank you, everybody. Big pop, big pop from the people in line for MASH. And, uh, of course, my first sexual experience solo was uh, uh, directed towards Loretta Swit. Okay, I don't know if that's like an of course situation, but uh, that's, fi that's uh, fine. She played the character of Hot Lips Houlihan. Ah. And uh, to my shock and surprise, she was also from Passaic, New Jersey. Wow, small world. I feel like I'm kind of getting an idea of where this is. Is anybody might be here going. from Passaic? Wow. Big pop for Passaic. Well, there was a bus that actually picked us up at oh. the county college. You know? I see. Yeah. Got it. You guys kind of did like a carpool kind of situation. Yeah, I, mean, I, I saw a flyer in the, uh, the all purpose room. Oh, okay. I'm glad that our marketing team is doing something. I don't know why we keep paying. They say like our analytics are going up and I don't really know what that means. But cool, okay. So anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, you were getting to your wish. Well, yeah, usually it's like a trip to Mountain Creek or something skiing, but I'm not really much for snow adventures or anything. And sometimes it's to see a Broadway show, but I think they're a little tacky these days. Oh, you know? really? Back in the day, they used to be really fun. Ah. Well, I guess I'll see you later. <laughs> no, you're, no, wait, hold on. Uh, you, you were gonna... Oh, yes, yes, your I wish, your wish. Get to the wish. Yes, you've come all this way. Well, I want my dreams to become reality. Okay. I want to meet Loretta Swift. Aha, your childhood crush. Well, now, not just my childhood crush, okay? Uh, I, I have a, a Pluto.tv, and... Woo! Big pop! Big pop for Pluto TV. And, and Pluto, they, they have these reruns on all day. Uh, it's a pretty much a mass channel, which is something I wrote in for when the cable networks were starting. And now it's come to fruition, so why can't this one? Why can't I meet Loretta Swit? Well, uh, you could, with the power of my wish-granting abilities. However, uh, we'll have to clarify a few details here. Now, is Miss Loretta still with us on the, in the mortal plane, or has she passed on? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> she's still with us, and she's still got it going on. Okay. All right, so I guess that was going to be my next question is, did you want, like, a young MASH Loretta or, like, current day whatever she's got going on situation? I mean, I didn't consider that. Because we could form- do either way. Yeah, I mean... Oh! <laughs> you hate to see that. Let's cut to the wide. I'm so sorry about this. One of our council members, I believe it was Naked Comedy, has donated $5 and therefore your life is now on the line. Traveler, in order to spare your life, you will have to convince the council to donate $10 so that your wish of meeting, what was her name? Loretta? Loretta Switch. Loretta Switch might be realized. The floor is yours now, Traveler, to convince the council to sp- to save your life. I'm going to be honest, it's not the first time somebody told me to kill myself. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Way to go, Jones. I guess I maybe shouldn't have led with that I uh, would pleasure myself to Loretta. <laughs> because it's a lot deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> the dreamscapes I'd create. I don't know if I told you, I'm a poet. Oh, I, I guess poet? I kind of just got that vibe from your yeah. aesthetic. Adjunct poetry professor at several liberal arts colleges, or at least was. Um, and, you know, I, I'm really good at uh, just creating a, a, a visual. Notice you said was. That is interesting. Well, I can't hug anybody anymore. <laughs> so, let me True. paint a picture. Self awareness is nice. It's. If I, if I could really just. If this, if this wish could be whatever I want it to be, it's Greenwich Village. <laughs> it's it's 1978. <laughs> the jazz clubs are on fire. The city is on fire. And my lawyer, oh my God. Oh, there it is. All right. Looks like we've got some. That was a close one, John. But it seems that you were able to curry the favor with the council. It is now $15 to re-sacrifice you, so we'll update that graphic. But in the meantime, John... I bet my fingers smell weird. <laughs> oh, is that... <laughs> but I don't think it's from the, the surround. And it's, it's not like a wilderness smell. What's the like smell? A, it originated from me, but it's unusual. Okay. <laughs> Something's wrong. Something's right. wrong. No, we won't don't drink the water! Okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Don't now, drink the water. Right before one of that? the counts, but yeah, I got that. <laughs> you want to? I would rather not. Okay. I'd rather not. Uh, jo- this? Yeah. yeah. It, it's big. My olfactory glands. I can actually kind of smell it from here. It's like, it's kind of almost like old cereal is kind of the smell I'm getting. Like stale. See, that's what I'm kind of getting too. Like stale cereal. Maybe it could, yeah, it's like a, like a... Like life like cereal? Infant, like a life... I'm getting more of like a Cheerio. Like Cheerios? But like a, like a... Did they do an apple cinnamon still? They did, I think, It's like limited, an apple cinnamon Cheerios. And yeah. I guess it's both oats. It's cinnamon. Cinnamon is the winnamon. Okay, come on. All right. No, I don't want to do that. Behavior. I don't want to do that. Please step away. John, we've got some unusual behavior here that we're going to need you to explain for us. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull that up. And what's happening here, John? Well, I, I'm seeing some curves I like. <laughs> um, I, well, it looks like a... This is maybe a former student of yours or something? I, well, it, it looks like the Disney character. Yeah. Oh, I looks, forget his name. I think that's Goofy. Well, it is sure is a silly uh, scenario. Um, Take one step back for me, John. There you go, that's perfect, right there. Oh, careful, careful, don't take too many steps back. I know, kill myself, right, I, I get right. it. You can't do that, only only the council can do that. 
Well, it looks like, um, uh, uh, I, I guess the, the, the woman with the 38, 40, 30, 34, 30, I, I, I was just guesstimating uh, her curve. Um, uh, it looks like she's dealing with a deep depression. Uh. Uh, quite often my bachelor apartment looks like that. Uh, you know, sometimes you just get takeout, you know, soup, you know, paper soup cups start filling the place. And, right, uh, right. You know, uh, you know, t- tea, tea uh, spilled all over the place, and you know. Hey, you're an artist. Spilled. I'm an artist. That's how it goes sometimes. There's always, there's always a sort of uh, 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 trash everywhere. Now it appears that one of the council members has donated five dollars, which is one third of the amount that it will be required that to re-sacrifice you. That goes to me? Nope, that does not go to you. <laughs> That does not go to you. Because yeah. uh, like I said, I took a bus here. Right. Yeah, but you like split that with a bunch of people, right? Yeah, but the, I think the bus driver's taking a, a bit too much off the top. Oh, you paid directly 30? to the bus driver. Well, back, you, know, you walk up, you get in the line, you pay the bus driver. It was $30. And we took a $30 bus before. But then again, I've never left the tri-state area. Okay, well, <laughs> welcome to the big wide world, John. It's now there's now ten dollars remaining in the balance in order to sacrifice your life. So we'll try to we'll try to get to your wish before the council's able to kill you again. John, uh, before you were last sacrificed, we were talking about whether or not you'd like a a young Loretta Swift, yeah. Swift, Swift, supple, young, perky, you know. Okay, I don't. Those are your words, not mine. Hey, but you, you know. So you want it? You want you the version from? <laughs> I do. That's not that's not wrong. So you want the version from Mash then? I, want, I would like the version from MASH, please. Got it. Okay, well, that's not is Not the motion picture. I think the that's... Te- the series. Yes. I see. Well, it seems... This can't get into Rabbit And we got it. And we did get the John, you're smelling your hands again. I can't help it. I'm sorry. You're much closer to me now, and the the scent is truly potent, strong. Guilty as charged. <laughs> you're right. All right, John. You know the drill. The council is now. It seemed it sort of was like a crowdfunding situation where they pulled together mm-hmm. in order to kill you. In order to save you now, John, it will cost twenty dollars. Okay. A high price for a life like yours. However. You may be able to persuade them. You mentioned that you were a poetry adjunct professor, perhaps a poem about why your life should be spared would convince the council to spare your life. Well, or not. I mean, I'm just kind of spitballing. All my poems are... You were not my girlfriend. What's that? But you came with me to prom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you were at my graduation. But you're not my dad nor mom. <laughs> and you were with me at Russ and Daughters, where I got myself a treat. <laughs> this poem is to you, Ode to Empty Seat. See, my poetry's not really. Wow! Whoa. Wow! <laughs> I am shocked that we did not receive a $20 donation immediately after that second line. My, my poetry is not really about sparing my life. It's sort of like, why would anybody want to live a life like mine? Oh, please. Probably you're you're selling just... yourself short, John. I thought that was quite lovely. Somebody, uh, you can sell my uh, return ticket. I might just take the fast way uh, out of here. Oh, uh, well... It does appear that there are no donations coming in here, John. I'll give you maybe one last go at some sort of send-off. It could be a poem, it could be any last words, and then, unfortunately, if we do not receive the $20 donations, I will eat you, blood, bones, and all. Yeah, yeah, you could just skip it. Okay, all right, you're, you're good on that? I mean, uh, if you're hungry, I... I, I you know, I haven't eaten I like to today. give to the needy, you know. I, I, I talk with derelicts on the street almost every day for hours on end. Wow. Uh, so if you're hungry, here it comes. Very well. It's been a pleasure hearing your poetry, John. And now, into my tummy. Yum, 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 yum.
Yep. It was cinnamon flavored Cheerios on his hands. Distinct cinnamon taste to that sacrifice. Folks, it's a shame. A, a starving artist never got to realize his art showing around the world and didn't get to... I'm not really sure what he was going to do with that woman, honestly, if we ever met her. I'm, let's just assume it was going to be fine. Anyway, folks, my name, of course, is Jonks. I'm a wish-granting demigod. I live at the top of this mountain, and travelers come from far and wide to climb my mountaintop and ask for their wishes to be granted. Of course, it's not up to me, though, to grant those wishes. I have the power to do it, but it's up to you, the Council of Jonks, to vote democratically to decide if their desires are realized. Yes, so far we've had two travelers come to my mountaintop, a doctor who wished to be able to kill with diplomatic immunity. The council decided not to grant his wish. And then most recently, an adjunct poetry professor who wished to meet his childhood crush from the television program MASH. Although it seemed like an innocent enough wish and he did demonstrate some beautiful poetry the council decided not only not to grant his wish, but to sacrifice him, blood, bones, and all, into my gullet, where he perished. Now I think I see another traveler making their way up. The council says, oh, question from council member Scholar for Christ. If we donate $20, can we bring back a deceased traveler? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say yes. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like that's... Not usually an option, but yeah, if you, if you, if a single council member donates $20 with the intent of bringing back a deceased, oh, excuse me, I think I've got something, oh, excuse me, poetry leg coming up the wrong pipe. Yeah, if one, if a council member donates $20 to bring back a specific, uh, digested traveler, I will try to use my powers to bring them back to life. Anyway. If you donate $5, you can sacrifice a traveler. If you subscribe tonight, you can put an entry in our guest book. Let's bring up the guest book one more time. We've got two entries in our guest book so far. One from Naked Comedy and one from Sarah Dance Painter. And if you'd like to have your own entry in our guest book, yep, just look at that beautiful free real estate right there. That could be where your, that could be where your entry goes. Uh, oh, I should also remind you that if you if you join the Everything Now Show Discord, you can submit images for us to use as odd behavior. We've had a few odd behaviors that we've shown so far tonight. But if you'd like to submit an image and see it shown on stream this evening, join the Everything Now Show Discord. It's free. There's a link to it in the chat right now. Join the Discord. Go into the submissions channel. Submit an image. We might use yours on the show tonight. Anyway, folks, I think I see the next traveler making their way up to my mountain. I'm here now. I'm here at the big mountain for you. I wasn't kidding. Hello, traveler. What? Hold on. They're talking to me right now. They're talking to me right now. Traveler. Thank you very much. Hey, hey, hello. What's up? Yes. Hi. Welcome. What is your name? My name's Debbie, and I'm only here to prove a point to my husband. He keeps, he wants to have like this sexy time with Star Trek stuff and you know, I'm like, you know, that's that's your thing. I, I know a lot of people like it, but I don't like it that much. And he's like, I just wish you give a shit. I'm like, oh, I wish I give a shit too, you know. Oh, I wish so much, I'll go talk to that junk guy to see if he'll grant my wish of giving, wishing a shit. Anyways, so he's, he's on the phone right now. He's You're on the on phone, the right phone. Now. Yeah. I'm gonna have to ask you to hang up your phone. We can call him on my magical phone booth, but you're not gonna get great cell reception up here. Oh, I, I thought it was... I'm sorry. David, he said he'll, I have to call you back, but um, I'm here, so yeah. Okay, bye. If you'd like to call, you can. a council member can activate our magical phone booth. But what, what did you say your name was, Traveler? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie, you've come to my mountaintop domain, and let me make sure I understand this correct, in order to wish to give a shit about what your husband thinks. And we are immediately getting your husband back on the phone. We're gonna bring in our magical phone booth. Take a step back. This thing blows up out of the ground. Whoa! Yeah, sorry, I tried to warn you. It's pretty violent. All right, you can walk up to the uh, into the phone booth and grab the phone. We should have your husband on the line now. Go ahead and pick up the phone. Oh. 
It's right here. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> it's in the phone booth. Hey, hey, sweetheart, I uh, hopped on the landline after I heard it was a uh, no good reception. Yeah, yeah. So you see, I wasn't bluffing. I'll, I'm serious. I wish I gave a shit. I wish you gave a shit too, honey. I'd love to do some, you know, you're Captain Picard and I'm like one of the other guys on the ship kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But I, I, di I did the motions. Just because my emotions are in it doesn't mean I don't give a shit. I do give a shit, but I d don't. Look, I appreciate that you went all the way up to this giant mountain, waited in line for several hours, and you maybe passive aggressively are asking Jonks for oh, what? Definitely a petty thing. Okay, by the way, let me tell you, they got the most delicious, these little, like, corazones with chili and, and lime on the way. I bought a few of them. They're so good. Oh, I'd love to. If you want to bring one of those home, I'd love yeah. to have one of those. I'm making dinner right now. Oh. Uh, look, honey, what were you going to wish for exactly? Well, you know, I wish I gave a shit about, you, you know, your fantasies, you know? I, like, I wish... I wish I liked Star Trek or Star Wars, whatever it is. They're both equally good. What? Yeah, I, I actually think anyways. they're. I think they're the both. I couldn't choose between one. If you, if you held a gun up to our child's face and said, "Pick one," I'd say, "Kill the kid." You, you know what? Explain in, in this that, odd behavior. Scenario. Who is that? We're gonna bring up some odd behavior for you to explain, and we are also <laughs> gonna bring back. like these little games here where. I'm going to have to ask you to hang up the phone. All right, honey, I love you. Thank you so much for this. Baby, I love you too, bud. Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Sorry, I got to say that because it gets sucked into hell, and it's a whole thing if you get sucked in there too. Anyway, we're going to bring back that poet back to life. But, uh, but in the meantime, we have some unusual behavior. That Can you explain what's going on here? Ants the movie by DreamWorks. <laughs> okay, you nailed it. Yep. That's exactly right. This is. So oh, it's in this one. Did you um? Do you have some sort of emotional connection to this particular film? I I didn't watch it, but you know I like how they spelled ants with a Z. You know, giving a little style. Uh, got it. So you're just a kind of a fan of the aesthetic. Yeah. I got is it. Is that pretentious? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you for explaining that. So that's not like a that's not like a movie that you and your husband like, you know, that has some sort of meaning in your relationship or something like that. No. Got it. For our movie, uh, what's that one? Apocalypse Now is one for us. <laughs> that's like your romantic date night kind of movie. Oh yeah. You put on Apocalypse Now and just oh, kinda yeah. Netflix and chill with that? Yeah, that's one of my kinks. Just oh really? Out. And then you know, that when that helicopter starts going, you know. That really gets you going? That gets me going. I don't know. It's like one of those. What's that psychological thing when you're in the car and you just see like a light flashing? Like, and I don't it's know. Like, I don't know that one either. I guess that's like. It gets you in REM state. It's, it's like good. driving blindness or something. No, it's this thing. Like when you see light like flashing slowly, it can get you in an REM state. Yeah, like, it's like it's like street hypnosis or something. I know what you're talking about. I know yeah. what you're saying. Someone's suggesting schizophrenia no i think that's something else uh but that actually brings uh me to uh my council you'll notice behind you there's a wall of text that is the council of junks and they have they have some questions for you council members do you have sorry your name again debbie was that your name yes debbie De debbie uh does anyone have any questions for debbie regarding her wish and is your wish still just to be clear is your wish still to give a shit about your husband's kinks I mean, yeah, I, 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 that's what I came up here. It's really to prove a point to him that I, I could. Got it. You know, so, so it's really just sort of out of spite. It is, but I not, see. you know, yeah. Hey, well, there's no harm in that. I, I will. I do notice, Debbie, that you've gone most of the way in into acknowledging his kinks. You're wearing the Star Trek shirt. Yes. And that wasn't enough for him. Not enough for him, and honestly, dry as a whistle. <laughs> I see. A whistle's dry or wet? Because well, you know, I guess as a whistle, dry yeah. as a whistle. Dry as an unused whistle, an unblown into whistle. Yeah. <laughs> that. Here, here's a question for you, uh, Debbie from Council Member Naked Comedy. What do you give a shit about? Apocalypse Now. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know that Basketball Diaries movie with Leonardo DiCaprio was pretty good for me. <laughs> Grew up in New York, you know, so it's like all those Catholic school things sure, are, sure. are hot. Uh, I like Al Pacino too. 
I did I guess I guess I have a type. Uh I like I like these little things are good. Yeah, I Whatever. noticed that you got that. Uh it, it, we've been talking with our sort of like hospitality division about setting up some sort of snack bar. They said they were doing like protein shakes too. Did you see protein shakes down there? Oh, I wasn't looking for that. I just no? I saw this frying there and I was like, "Gimme." Gotcha. Okay. <sighs> Oh shit! <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. John, Ooh. I'm so sorry. I digested all of your clothes. Yeah. He's a golem type. We don't usually. This is John. What did you say your name was? John Friendly. John Gentle. John Gentle. Sorry. Sorry. Hello. About that. Hello. Debbie, this is John Gentle. I ate him a few minutes ago. Oh yeah. I, I, you know you. They can, smell you can weird, see right? They they smell a, a little weird. A little weird. I don't know. I woke up in a river. And you think <laughs> I cannot wash apologize it away. enough for that, John. I'm really sorry. We don't usually bring people back to life, so I'm a little bit rusty on that. Well, but the, the fingers still smell. <laughs> well, Almost at least more, we got more. that. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Oh, Kool-Aid. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Hmm. Well, anyway, I guess I guess John's just gonna hang out for a little bit. Um, so we didn't really, we never really take you. No, no, you I'll can, just wait over here. You can hang around. Careful, you're right you on the edge around, there, John. You, know, you, you kind of remind me of my husband a little bit. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, you know, creative. Oh, actually, maybe this this brings up an interesting opportunity where maybe we, we can we can solve something without a wish by doing Try John to role play. Yeah, well, John, if you wouldn't mind, it sounds like you're. You're sort of... I am sexually experienced, if that's what you're getting at. That's not what I was getting at. I was going to say you remind Debbie of her husband. Oh. But, um, but yeah, maybe, Debbie, if you want to potentially role-play a scenario where you can respectfully uh, discuss your husband's sexual kinks with him in a way that makes it clear what you want without making him feel bad about what he wants. So we're role-playing. Yeah. I didn't realize it was getting two wishes this time. Oh. Okay, <laughs> settle down. Am I gonna get paid? Settle for this down, now? John. Uh, no, you're not getting. Sorry, Did Debbie. I, like if you don't want to do this, I just thought it would be. A, I thought it'd be no, a convenient way. I can't afford therapy, and this seems nice. I, I mean, whatever it takes. I'm trying to save my marriage over here. That's you kind know? of what I was going for too. And just a reminder to the council: for five dollars, we'll kill either of these people. All right, so. I hope not. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. All right, so and just so you to fill you in, John, Debbie's husband has a fetish wherein he uh, wants her to sort of, I guess, dress up like a character from Star Suck Trek. Stick while wearing the Star Trek shirt. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I like so, the new series. I haven't caught up in the rest. Got it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'll I'll start off the scene and let's say we're in the bedroom at the what's your guy's last name? Do you guys have the same last name? Debor. Debor. Yeah. All right, we are in the bedroom at the DeBoer household and things are starting to get hot and heavy. Uh, hold on, hold on, I gotta uh, finish doing my calisthenics, hold on. And, I, and it takes me about two, two hours to unwind for bed. Got it. Man, you really remind me of my husband. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm ready for bed, babe. I put on the shirt you like. Oh, yeah, you're looking very nice. Hey, I'm glad you like it, babe. Oh, I'm getting word from the captain. <laughs> a bunch of, they just brought a bunch of uh, soldiers into the 4077 <laughs> of the spaceship. Huh? A, a bunch of soldiers, a, a, the captain of the, uh, the nursing unit uh, <laughs> at, on the ship. This meme is so funny. That's really, yeah, yeah, just that's good. That's good. Sorry, I wanted to get you guys under the mic. <laughs> oh, you continue. Sorry. All right. So actually, I'm gonna pause you right here. Yeah. Uh, John, no notes for you. You're killing it. Thank you. Loving the Star Trek specifics. Yeah. Deb, it seems to me like there's a clear disinterest in your tone and your general vibe, and I, I think that's totally fine to have. But I think. I think rather than being passive aggressive, just be open with your feelings. Be honest. It's your husband. You guys have known each other for a long time. I think he should be able to handle that sort of okay. blunt, naked honesty. Hold, hold on, John. I want to look at these memes first. <laughs> Good. Okay. And you've got a question, John? <laughs> what are memes? Just, memes? You don't know what memes are? No. It's like little jokes on the internet. Okay. Visual you know. jokes. Yeah, like a 
the side effects. <clears throat> Like, Not really. Like something Sid Caesar would write. Oh, thank you. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Whoever. Some guy in line. All right, so uh, so let's jump back in. You guys are things are getting hot and heavy at the Devore household, okay. but Debbie has just uh, made clear that she would rather look at memes. When I'm happy. I... I'm happy. And you're feeling good. When do I remove my tote? Okay. Um, <laughs> let's cut out of this. All right, well, Debbie, how does that make you feel? Did it was it was it uh, cathartic for you to be honest with your husband in that role play? Um, the thing is, is his boner didn't go down; it stayed up. So technically, I was reborn, so the blood is is, is going all over the place. Got it. Yeah, we're just we're trying to get those. Uh, I'm not even going to follow this line of logic. I'm going to thank. <laughs> I'm going to thank Bogey Orangutan. <laughs> For the subscription, Bogey, let us know what you'd like to put into the guest book. And all right, I think you know what the role play doesn't seem to really be working. Well, uh, I gotta say, whoever your husband is, he's a real lucky guy. Oh, that's very that's sweet. Cute. I wish I had somebody that cared enough about me to maybe put on a you know some uh, a blonde wig and a, you know a 4077 uniform and do my hot lip cool hand fantasy and the fact that you're here in this sexy outfit i think he's a very lucky guy what is the 407? It's the MASH unit in Korea, right. led by Hawkeye Pierce oh. and uh, Corporal Klinger and uh, uh, the others. Okay. Radar O'Reilly. That's funny because I like military stuff. T- isn't Apocalypse Now the same as MASH? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, military it's, things? Should, yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same. <laughs> wow. wow. Interesting. You guys kind of seem to be hitting it off. You both have these sort of obscure military fetishes. Wow. Um, well, that's nice. I couldn't serve in the war, uh, but I serve every night in my fantasies. And uh, Maybe you'd like to create them sometime, either with your husband or without your husband. I mean, I, I, could, I, could I change my wish to being allowed to uh, cheat on my husband without it being bad? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. can do that. So just to be clear, you your wish... It? No, I No, the council has to grant it, but I'm oh. just saying that's possible. Now, I want to clarify no here. Disrespect. I want to clarify here is the, is the wish for you to be in a consensual polyamorous relationship wherein your husband is aware that you're cheating on him? No. That okay. would kill the boner. Okay, that would okay. kill the boner. I got it. So you want to you want to secretly cheat on your husband, but for it to not be a problem. So I guess just like he but never really finds out. Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Sorry, the, the altitude is getting too Yeah, we're low. really high up. I'm just so... Okay, so the wish is to have an extramarital affair with this, this guy, John, who is a poet... You want to fuck this guy, and you want your husband never to find out about it. That's yeah. the wish. And for me not to have a guilty conscience at all. And you don't feel bad about it. Exactly. Got it. Okay, yeah. Well, I feel like we're just about ready to pull up the poll. We're going to ask the council uh, whether or not they're going to grant that wish. <laughs> council members, it's up to you now to decide whether or not we grant Debbie's wish of letting her cheat on her husband secretly with John, and it won't ever be a problem. Like, no guilty conscience, and the husband won't know. I didn't think I'd come here for this. <laughs> This is why. Hey, it's a, it's a hundred. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Hold on, John. Hold on. Give it a second. Uh oh. This oh, complicates no. things. No. This does complicate things. Now we have two people. It's Debbie. It's gonna have to oh, it's Debbie. Debbie. Oh, heartbreaker. You know, Close out the poll. Someone's mom got cheated on. <laughs> it was a yes. Someone or someone's dad. Unfortunately, Debbie, right before we were able to close out the poll on your wish, a council member decided to sacrifice you. Now, it is up to you, and I guess your lover, John, 
to convince the council to spend $10 and spare your life so that you may have your extramarital love tryst. And we're already getting some booze. They're booing that they're getting eaten. Oh, okay. So you've got some fans. Go ahead now. The floor is to both of you to convince the council to save your life, Debbie. Um, I think this is a once-in-a-lifetime challenge, uh, uh, opportunity where we could pretend we're in the jungles of Vietnam or Korea, North Korea. Damn, like Cary Grant and Gunga Din. I don't know that reference, but yeah, and uh, I hope it's not from Apocalypse Now. Um, and uh, if someone could do that, the fan, the helicopter sound, that would just really set it off for It's me. in the mash intro. Oh. Morning bug I see The rift of the thing to be Cause suicide is painless I committed suicide Is that what the earlier. song? It brings yeah. on many but changes The intro song to MASH talks and about And I can take or leave it Oh, cause it's a I metaphor leave. for go- signing up for the army That's it's right <laughs> Debbie, we have a question from the council They want to know if you have children Uh... If you count hamsters and bunnies and puppies and kitties, yeah. Okay, you're like a fur mama. That's right. Got it. All right, well, despite singing the MASH theme song, it does seem that the council has decided not to save your life, Debbie. We'll give you one last opportunity both to speak your truth. Debbie, these will be your last words if the council does not donate to save you. You what know, do you want them to know? I'm going to miss my husband. And I'm going to never get to enjoy uh, John's John. But <laughs> honestly, not to be uh, uh, redundant, but I guess I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't give a shit. If I die by the junks, guy. I committed suicide early before. Like I said, suicide is painless. Very well. Whoa! Oh. Wow! Just in the nick of time, Council Member Siloth has spared your life. There you go. <laughs> Roll the bumper. I'm sorry, I finished. I finished. Okay, all right. Whoa. I'm sorry. Whoa. I'm sorry. Wow. wow. It's been a really big day. Uh, the blood is all over the place. Wow. I just climbed up a big hill. I guess Wasting it just... Wasting no time. It just shoots at that. I'm so sorry about those white wow. pants. Oh, they were already stained. Okay. Jesus Christ, guys. I know we granted the wish, but... All right. I feel, uh, so, I feel kind of embarrassed right now. Now. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> You're talking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It usually doesn't happen. I feel more like a, what's it called, a full metal jacket uh, feeling, you know, it's, instead of a pocket. I'm, I'm feeling uh, the guy on the toilet, you know what I'm talking about? No, I've never seen a movie after uh, Vincent Daniel. D'Onofrio. I feel like Vincent D'Onofrio, full metal jacket. Hmm. Need to take a shit, you know? Okay, all right. Well, I see. I had a great time. <laughs> Debbie and John, hold on just one second here. I saw that we received a $5 donation right after we left your last sacrifice attempt. Now, I'm not sure if that if that money is going to kill John, because his sacrifice meter is still at $5, right? All right, let's just get out of here. All right. Says mine doesn't count. Okay, so. got it. We're just going to take that money and run. All right, uh, you guys, I guess, we, we granted the wish. The council voted to grant your wish, and so you guys are free to go have your weird, freaky... I think I'm war good. related sex king. I think I had enough though. Oh, you're know, good. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the stinky cum. I just like stinky cum. I'm what did it go- smell like? It it smelled like if Kool Aid smelled bad. Oh. Yikes. All right. All right. Well, on that note, if you guys could both get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm good. Gr- you really. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. We're gonna need to wash Thanks, the mountain. Is it okay if I? Do the uh, the quick route again. You want me to just kill you by eating you right now? Oh, I could just no. hop off this thing. Yeah, you could just jump to your death. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! Oh my god! I didn't think you'd actually do it. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god! All right. I don't know if you guys heard that, but he he fell really far. All right. <laughs> 
Uh, let's get the donation meter back down to five bucks. Thank you so much. I fight for them for the, the, uh, free money, I guess. We really appreciate that. We will take that. Thank you so much to everybody who's watching right now. If you're just joining us, my name is Jonks. I am a wish-granting demigod. I live at the top of this mountain. Travelers come from far and wide to have their wishes granted. However, it's not up to me to decide whether or not the wish gets granted. It's up to you, the Council of Jonks. Yes, you. Yep, that's you. That is the visual representation of you. Yep, we got it. That's them. Uh, if you guys, yep. If you guys vote, okay. And that is the council. And if you, and if you guys vote to, all right. That's yep. Thank hey, you. Hey, Johns. Hey. Hey, how's traveler. it going? Welcome, traveler. How's it going? My name's Lyle Bernard. Lyle Bernard. How's what it brings going? you here, Lyle Bernard? Uh, I am a. Uh, Hopeful screenwriter. Ah. Uh, I've written a spec for The Last of Us, that new show. Oh, yes, the video game show. The zombie show. Yes, yes. yes. Thank um, you for the subscription, Java Vision. Let us know what you'd like to write I in the guest I work at book. Trader Joe's by day, but I'm hoping that soon uh, I can get into that writer's room. Hey, everybody's got to have a day job. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I've written um, a Last of Us spec. And I was just wondering if I could like kind of workshop it with the room and we can kind of try to build something new. I'll read you the thing in its entirety maybe to start out. Well, I don't know if we have time for you to read an entire spec script. Well, we let do... me kind of just start with the intro here. We can feel it out and then, you know, okay. as, as we keep going, maybe you have some notes and just, my wish is gonna be for us to sort of workshop this to the best of its potential. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, well. Really quick before you start, Lyle, we've got an entry in our guest book that I'd okay. like to show. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Jabba Vision says, always a council member, never a sacrifice. Well, Jabba Vision, if you find your way to my mountaintop domain, you too could be eaten, blood, flesh, bones, and all here on Jonks Mountain. All right, Lyle. All right. Crane in. And read it. We crane in through the desolate wasteland of the future. We keep craning in, until eventually we're inside Nick Offerman's character's house. He's sucking and fucking that other guy. They're both sucking and fucking each other for a long time. A long extended sequence of those two going at it with each other. Really graphic. You're seeing penetrative sex on the camera. They're really going at it. I mean, I mean going at it. Like, I know we're HBO, but we're pushing it even for that. Uh, and this is all stage direction? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. And let's go to the wide just so that we can see the donation goal up in the top left corner. Thank you. Right, so it's it's a lot. It's intense. Pedro Pascal's character walks in. He goes, whoa, mind if I get in on this? He joins them. The three of them start sucking and fucking each other. They're really going at it. I mean, it is getting steamy in there. Steam starts to form in the room. We zoom in. We're kind of in the steam for a little bit. These guys are still really, really going at it. Pedro Pascal's character, Nick Offerman's character, and the other guy who was originally dating Nick Offerman. They all keep going at it for like a really long time. And it's, let me just skip ahead a little bit here. Yes, yeah, Scholar for Christ. If we get if we get approval from I Fight For Them, we'll take that. All right. Pedro Pascal's character's drinking Gatorade. <laughs> Pedro Pascal's character. Give me like two minutes, guys, and I'm gonna hop back in there. All right? I just, I just need to sort of. I'm not, I'm not at the pace you guys seem to be at at this point in time. Pedro Pascal's character drinks a lot of Gatorade. And I'm noticing just a quick note if we're workshopping this that you're referring to all the characters as their actor's name and then yeah. his character. Yeah. So look, it's it's tough to keep up with this industry. There's so many shows. I have not watched this show. Got it. That's I don't, honestly I'm, coming off the page a little bit. The last show I really have a good handle on is Scrubs. I okay. loved Scrubs. That was like a really brilliant show to me. That's but interesting because I'm getting no Scrubs vibes from this. I'm just trying to keep up with what's in the industry right now. Sure. You know, I'm reading Variety and they're saying this is the big new show. Everyone's talking about it. So I'm going to just hop back in here if that's cool. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, the three of them keep sucking and fucking each other. Right. It's getting really intense, and then a zombie kicks in the door. Okay, they're, now here we go. They're this all is really like scared. The show. Yep, yep. The, the zombie 
charges in and bites Pedro Pascal's character. Okay. He's crying. He's bleeding on the ground. All right. The other two guys look really scared. We fade out. Okay. Fade in. Sacred Heart Hospital. Okay. Turk okay. and JD are standing over the bed. <laughs> They're going... Dr. Cox is going to be furious when he sees what we th initially treated this guy All with. All right, and let's pause for one second here. Mm hmm Because it's, to me, it's sounding like now we're in an episode of Scrubs. Okay, well, here's the other thing I've been told. I've been taking a lot of screenwriting seminars. I've been going to... Do you know that guy who did Story, Robert McKee? Uh, the name is Rain. I went to Robert McKee's thing. He says, write what you know. Right. So I was like, well, I know Turk. I know JD. <laughs> I know Janitor. Uh, so I kind of tried to blend. I'm sort of trying to write, and, and, you know, maybe there's crossover potential. I don't know. I'm just trying to have a strong piece of writing here. And your wish, just to be clear, was to sort of workshop this script? Yeah, we all sort of take turns, giving notes, seeing right. what it, maybe we do a table read of some kind. Well, we are kind of already doing that, so let's go ahead and get the poll up. Okay. To decide Can I keep going? We, I guess, yeah, if the, if Dr. the Dr. Cox walks it. into the room. Jesus, newbie. You call this medical doctoring? Someone ought to teach you how to how to be a better doctor. Dr. Cops, Cox slaps, slap, sorry. You all right? <laughs> yeah, it's just, this is an emotional scene. Yeah, it's not like Cox. you called him Dr. Cops for a second yeah. there. <laughs> Dr. Cox slaps him in the back of the head. He says, what the hell's wrong with you? You're pathetic. I hate you. JD goes, I'm sorry, Dr. Cox. Turk puts his arm over JD's shoulder and goes, don't worry about it. We have steak night later and everything's gonna be fine. They sing the steak night song together, which is we're doing steak night. We're gonna eat it right. Steak is such a treat. It is the world's best meat. And that's a real song from Scrubs. Uh, next page. We cut, Carla walks in. Turk, where, what? Where's... Hey, let's go ahead and close out that poll. Turk. <laughs> You were supposed to be watching our son right now. What are you doing? Oh, man, Lyle, I'm what? so sorry. Yeah, we we actually voted on your wish to continue reading your script and workshopping it, and it sounds like that council actually doesn't want to do that. All right, well, John, could you maybe just give me some notes? Yeah, What did I guess, you think so far? There's a part where Todd shows up. Remember Todd? He always has like banana Todd. hammocks. Yeah, I guess if I had to give you some notes... It would be, it really, the middle is strong. The part where, where the zombie comes, each other? no, a little bit after that. I would say cut all the sucking and fucking at the beginning, and then cut all the stuff that happens after Pedro Pascal's character blacks out and it becomes Scrubs. I would say the, the meat of it is really the part where the zombie comes in and bites Pedro Pascal, so that may be like, what is that, like an eighth of a page right now? It's, it's one line. Yeah, I would say that's, keep that, the rest you could probably scrap. Oh. What was that? Something uh, happened? I fight for them wants to use their $5 for this guy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. And we are going to kill you. Oh, God. All right, Lyle, we've already voted not to grant your wish, but you can still spare your life and walk away from here with your well, life and if, limb. if you want to, sp something that'll spare my life is if you let me read the next part of my script. Okay, I will let you read the next page or so and counsel if you want to donate $10 to save him so that he can continue to pursue his dream as a screenwriter. You're welcome to do that. So Carl is yelling at Turk, you're supposed to be watching our child. Turk, I told Todd to watch the child for me. Carla, off her distressed face, we cut to Turk's house. Todd is hanging out with the child. He's going like, look at how strong I am, little kid, and he's flexing, and he's doing big flexes. We cut back to the hospital room. Carla, we are gonna talk about this when we get home. Now I'm Elliot noticing, Lyle, mm -hmm. that the script that you wrote for the show, The Last of Us, seems to be labeled Scrubs on the outside. All right, look, I will be honest. I moved out here a little bit of a, a while ago. I'm years old, so I've been at this for a while. I'm a years old, so time. I've been at this for a while, and... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, something like that. I've been at this for a while. Originally, I came out here, it was 2001, and I wrote a scrub spec script. Every few years, the new spec script changes, and I have to sort of rework this piece of writing into whatever that is. Got it. So where was I? Elliot bursts right, in the I room. I think the council has pretty much decided Are we sure we're not going to spend $10 to <laughs> save me? It really doesn't seem Are like it. Are we sure? Let's Elliot's about to show up. Guy. You guys remember Elliot? She's fun. She's, She's a good girl. character. She's the girl character? Yeah. All right, I'm going to eat you. All right. You know, usually we sacrifice before we decide whether or not we're going to grant the wish, but desperate times, desperate measures, I suppose. Thank you, Council, for that delicious snack. If you're just joining us, my name is Jonks. I live at the top of this mountain. Travelers come from far and wide to have their wishes granted. But it's up to you, the Council, to decide whether or not we grant the wish, deny the wish, or, in circumstances like that last one, you can decide to end their life with a $5 donation, and I will eat them, blood, bones, and all. As travelers make their way to ask for their wishes to be granted, you can also trigger the phone booth to pop out of the ground, and we'll talk to somebody from their life, maybe their husband. Yep. <coughs> uh, yep, that just kind of pops out of the ground, and it goes back down into the depths of hell. Uh, we can talk to their husband, their lover, their high school gym teacher, whoever. You can also... Send some images in our Discord. Join the Everything Now Show Discord and submit images of unusual behavior. We'll pull up that unusual behavior if you trigger the sound alert and force the traveler to explain what's going on. That's basically the gist of it. There's also a guest book. If you subscribe, you can sign the guest book. But I think I see another traveler making his way up my mountain. Oh. Goodness me. Oh. I'm sorry if my eyes are a little glassy and, and red during our conversation. I just watched the latest episode of HBO's The Last of Us. Oh, really? Yes. That's quite a coincidence. One, of the, most, one of the most affecting... Uh, uh, oh, dear, my hats. Oh, your hats. Your two hats. My two hats, yes. Uh, it's one of the most affecting episodes of television that I can recall. If you uh, made light of it in any way, I'd assume you are at least mildly homophobic. Okay. Well, I've never seen it, so I can't speak to that. Ah, well, you should watch it, Jonks. You'd love it. I hear it's good. There are so many rocks throughout the program. Really? Yes. That's interesting. Strewn about on the ground. And you think just because I'm also a rock that I would be into that? Well, representation like matters, Jonks. black Jones. guy and be like, hey, this show has so many black guys in it. I bet you'd really like it. Are we not allowed to say that? I wouldn't. Well, I don't. All right, what's your name, Traveler? My name is Viscount Treakley Tabernacle. Viscount Treaglet yes. Tabernacle. Treakly Tabernacle. Treakly Tabernacle. Like excessively sweet. If you were to, to do a sort of a dumbed down translation of my name, it's sort of like Viscount Sweet Tent. Like overly sweet tent. Saccharine Tent. Got it. I'm just going to call you Viscount. Viscount. That's my title. That's fine with me. All right, Viscount. And what is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? Well, you see, I was a member of the British aristocracy, and then I heard a song uh, by Glenn Campbell called Wichita Lineman, and uh, so now I'd like to become a country musician, you see. Ah, okay. And, uh, I, I went to the local college and had uh, my album artwork designed, and, uh, and so now I'm ready to sort of perform and make it big, only I'm not, I'm not making much headway, you see. Well, what seems to be the problem, Viscount? Well, it could be any number of things, I suppose. Um, when I went to purchase my guitar and they gave me a trumpet, that became kind of the first hurdle. It's very hard to learn guitar chords on a trumpet. I can imagine so. Um, kind of a big hurdle to overcome, that. Um, now here's a question from the council. When you say you want to be a country star, which country is that? Oh, well, I'm talking specifically um, sort of 1960s, 1970s outlaw country. You know? And that's America? Yes. United States? Yes. Country music in the United States. 
Um, well, I suppose, again, the number of problems, I think. I've, I've, I've been performing in um, bars that frequently host alternative programming, I would say. I'm, I've, I'm mostly based out of Kennebunkport right now. I moved down to Kennebunkport. There's not a big country scene there. That's kind of a problem. But, Jonks, if I had to tell you uh, what my wish would be, I miss home. I miss beans on toast. You want to go back to Britain? I want to go back home, but I want to know when I do that country music can be popular there. And so what I did, you see, Jonks, is I looked at the uh, sort of Explain history of American country music. Behavior. Now, I'm going to have to cut you off oh, there, Viscount, yeah. because we've got some unusual behavior that you're going to need to explain. Well, let's see what we've got. And now what is this? Ah, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, you see... When I spoke of the alternative programming taking place in some of these Kennebunkport watering holes, there's usually a sort of a... There's a lot of furries there. You've been going to furry bars well, trying to get the country music scene Yeah, popping? the thriving Kennebunkport furry bar scene. Yes, I've been... I can see. Yes, and it's I'm running into sort of a brick wall with that. And thing. any take on whether or not being a furry is haram? Ah, well, inshallah, they allow uh, in, in heaven, uh, in uh, you know... Uh, Allah permits us to uh, to dress however we like. It's a, uh, we'll see how that works out. Yeah, I'm gonna say whatever the respectful thing to be that doesn't get us fatwad is yes. my answer as well. Yes. Anyway, what is uh, the wish exactly here, Viscount? Is the wish to be a famous music star or is it to go back to England? Well, it's to become a famous music uh, country music artist back home in the UK. So to do this, to accomplish this, country music has to become very popular over there. And so I am wishing, Jonks, that the conditions that made country music so popular here in the United States are duplicated back home. And if you look at when country music was most popular recently, it was shortly after a little event called 9-11. So, Jonks, I'm uh. wishing for a British 9-11. You want them to do... Okay, let me just make sure I understand your wish. Your wish is for there to be a British 9-11 so that country music in Britain becomes popular and that yes. you, you can sort of ride that wave. I'm trying to increase the sort of latent patriotism of my countrymen. And, and uh, the best way to do that is to... Well, you know. What would a British 9-11 even look like? Ah, uh, probably a bomb in the tube. Bomb? I think they did that already. A bigger bomb. I thought bigger it was going to be tube. like a plane into Big Ben or something, no? Oh, or that the London would be, Eye. Wow, that would be pretty cool. I'm not trying to... <laughs> I don't know if it'd be cool. I'm just saying that well, seems like a more... British 9-11s in the chat. Now, yes, council, a, please right. pitch what you think yes, British 9-11 right. would look like. Yeah, let's workshop this. Uh, here's what I'm thinking with the problem with Big Ben. Not enough people in it. That's probably a good right? point, We need yeah. a building with a lot of like thriving commerce, you know? Tall ones. Buckingham Palace, that's What about out. the gherkin? It's like 12 people in there. You know about the gherkin? The gherkin? It's like the big dildo the pickle? shaped. It's, it's like a dildo Isn't that shaped a building. Yeah, they call it the gherkin. Of course it's I like know a, the gherkin. I'm like British. A, it's like a big dildo shaped building in London. Of course I know the gherkin. So you think that'd be good? <laughs> Maybe, <or not? laughs> probably, sure. sure. All right, well, listen, Viscount. To be honest, I'm not sure if this is going to accomplish your your goals because it sounds like what you want to be is sort of like an American country music star. And even if even if a 9/11 were to uh, like a British 9/11 were to trigger some sort of latent patriotism in Britain, Explain it would probably be behavior. like British country music, which is probably something completely different. And before you answer that, you've got some more odd behavior to explain. And what is this? Uh, what yes. is this? This uh, is Riker. Uh, in a sexy little outfit. Um, I've had this on my phone as a sort of inspiration. If I were to ever really take off as a country musician, uh, I would need, of course, background dancers. And they would all look like Riker in this exact shirt. This is Riker, right? That's the, did I get the name right? Yeah, okay, that, great. That lady's husband would love that. Right, exactly. Baby Slut, that's, what we, that's, the, that's the name of my country band. Oh, really? Yeah, they, Interesting. They, I can't imagine why you guys aren't popping off. I'm, it's mystifying to me. It's a, it's right. a mystery. Well, I come up, I cover six Glenn Campbell songs, yep. holding a trumpet. The room is full of furries. The room is full of furries. It's Kennebunkport. 
Got it. And, and they're just it, Jonathan. It's Jonathan Frakes lookalikes just behind me. No choreo, no choreography. It's all just them. Seems like figuring a it to out me. in the moment. All right. Well, Viscount, uh, I feel like we're nearly ready to have the council vote on whether or not we're well, going to do nine uh, eleven on England. But Jonks, you met, you br you brought up an interesting scenario. Which is that if, if the, the patriotism of my compatriots were to be stoked, that it would likely um, take on an aesthetic far different from the one that I am trying to pursue. Oh, Joey Cruz. Joey Cruz, thank you for the raid. Thank Welcome, you. Joey and five viewers. Thank you for being here. Am I, can I say that, Jonks? I suppose. I mean, you're... Uh, I'm kind of the host, but it's like... Mm. Fine, I suppose. Well, anyway. I, I suppose the only solution, Jonks, like I said, it's, it's not just Explain this about odd behavior. It's kind of uh, about, um, again, creating the conditions that would allow American country to thrive. All right, oh, what's this, Viscount? Well, I feel like this is definitely a guy, like a real... It says Robert Smith at the top. Ah, Robert Smith. I think it's from The Cure. From The Cure! And is is that the, are those the twin towers in the background? Is it that what I'm seem seeing? Like it looks like there's two. It looks like the World Trade Center back sort there. Sort of hmm? similarly boxy shaped. You know that meme of skyscrapers. The girl in front of the fire? Yeah. I think that's what this ah, is. Ah, yes. The implication is Robert Smith did not Well, <laughs> what more needs to be explained? Yeah, I think that, I think one that pretty much just speaks about, for itself. Yep, yeah, yeah, pretty succinct. Pretty well, yeah. Viscount. Uh, a little blunt, if anything. You were saying. You were making your your point. Well, again, about we want British to we want to duplicate music. the conditions that make country music um, viable in in the UK. So let's think. Can't just be 9/11. They need to also want to pursue country music aesthetics. Right. I we think are we, bring the I think up too. I think we're going to have to have had a civil war. Got it. At some point. All right. We'll we'll kind of tack that on. Right. We've never had one. I guess that's UK. true. We've you never guys, had any you're sort mainly of... revolutionary wars, as I understand well, yes. it. That's sort of your guys' thing. Is like you conquer, you go and do colonialism, and then people kind of get upset about that. Right, of course. There's never been any sort of like in house infighting, you know. Ah, well, we don't. Mm, interesting. No comment. Got it. Well, I think. We the IRA are, are, I suppose, very much like. I guess, well, no, actually, they're not at all like the other side in the Pretty in different, the yeah. yeah. Nope. Let's Very go ahead different. and close out that poll. Very different. Although, I guess my character would probably think that they're, I don't know. When Never you mind. say your character. Ah, uh, let's not worry about it. I agree. Well, it looks like, Viscount, we are going to grant your wish. The first let's granted go. wish of the, actually, the second granted wish of the night. And that wish, of course, was to do 9-11 on the British so that on the Gekin, it will we're gonna, inspire we're going to a fly. new wave of patriotism that will bring forth a country music surge, which you will rise we're going to the to, occasion. We're going to fly to two commercial airliners into the Gherkin and then um, remotely shoot down another one and pretend that it crashed. Right. And all this, just to be clear, is in Minecraft. So yes, in Minecraft. you cannot ban us from Twitch. Because it's all parody right, and right. satire. Anyway, let's Before, go ahead and say the magic words. Ah, it looks like the council is already saying them. If you're new here, join along with me in saying these magic words to grant this wish. Wibbity wobbity wonks, your, your wish, wish has, has been, granted been granted by, by jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks, your, your wish has, has been granted, granted by jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks. Your, your wish has, has been granted, granted by Jonks. And go ahead and check your phone, Viscount. You should see a new headline from the BBC. Ah, my flip phone. I had to check at the door. They said you're not allowed to ring them. Oh, up right. There. I forgot. We don't get good service up here. Well, when you get back down to the, uh, like the guest relations desk at the bottom of the I'm mountain. I'm right now. It's crazy. Okay. The backpack kid did a cool new dance. Okay. We're that's all talking about it. That's different. It's like, right. uh, it's like that's at the top and then down yeah. at the bottom with like 1,000 tweets. Yeah. British 9-11 exactly. is uh, it's All not, right, it's not even taking place on 9-11, which you'd think would be kind of like a prerequisite for calling it that. Well, but. they get their own thing. All yeah. right, Viscount, you're free to go. Enjoy, I, uh, I guess, that domestic or not domestic, that terrorist attack that is going to benefit your, you know, your career. May I say one last thing? Yeah, go ahead. Everybody 
tune in to HBO's The Last of Us Sundays at uh, I think 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, this was much more tasteful than mocking The Last of Us. Yes, of course, <laughs> of course. It's a beautiful love story. Nick Offerman crushes. Gotta go. Welp. Sometimes we eat an innocent man. Sometimes we recreate a horrific terrorist attack on an ally of the United States in order to benefit one man's sad career. That's just how it goes sometimes, but ultimately it's not up to me, it's up to you, and so that blood is on your hands, Council. I am just the tool that you wield. And by tool that you wield, I mean I am Jonks, the wish-granting demigod. I live at the top of this mountain. If you're just joining us from that raid, you're probably really fucking confused. Don't be. Oops, sorry, I think I got something coming back up. Maybe not, actually. Uh, anyway, I grant wishes. I live at the top of this mountain. People come and visit me asking for their wish to be granted. Like that last guy who wanted to be a country music star in Britain. Uh, but it could be anything that they wish for. And if you want to kill them, which I think probably would, we would have benefited from on that last guy, uh, five dollars is all you have to donate and we will murder whoever it is that is standing in front of me. I'll eat them blood bones and all. I think I see another traveler making their way up my mountain now. Oh, who's this? I, I'm Cat Tatooie. Cat Tatooie. <laughs> Hello, Cat Tatooie. What brings you to my mountaintop domain? Well, I saw what you guys did with Rat Tatooie, and I'm thinking oh. maybe I could get some of that little, you know, cooking. Speaking of cats. <laughs> Hello. It's my cousin. Oh, that's your cousin. You know that guy? Yeah, my cousin from the country. I live in the city. That's the difference. I see. All right, we're going to try to get him out of here. <laughs> Only one at a time in line, please. <laughs> Anyway, Cat Tattooey, you were saying, uh, sorry, I got distracted by your cousin. Uh, what is it that brings you here again? I, I I'm, I'm looking to start a restaurant business and be famous like Rat Tattooey. I'm a chef, you see. I cook. Uh, what are you cooking up there? Oh, is that a rat? Yeah, that's what we eat. Ah. A couple mice. Doing just kind of a rat in an empty pot. And it's what do you call that it's dish? It's full of food. Oh, well, that's one rat. Two. Oh, two rats. Hey, listen, we're in a recession. Hey, <laughs> that's true. I don't mean to... Judge me. I don't mean to mock the, the food scarcity situation here. All right, well, Cat Tattooey, your wish is to have your own restaurant like Rat Tattooey. Yes. And what is it that you would serve at this restaurant besides, I guess, rat stew, which is what you seem to be preparing now? The rat stew, rat dumplings, rat fricassee, rat saute... A uh, rat tattooey. Sure, is a thing. sure. I, uh, you know, ba basically anything I could do a, a rat lo mein too. I could, I'm good at cooking Chinese food. I know how to do French pastries, so I could do a, a rat croissant. I mean, I don't want to sit here listening to an amazing menu. No, it sounds uh, wonderful. I see. Well, what? Uh, it seems like you've already got a lot of. You've got the equipment there, I see, and you've got a great menu. So, what is it, Cat Tattooey, that's preventing you from opening your restaurant without this wish? Circumstances, you know, they don't really treat cats like they do rats in the the cooking industry and culinary arts, and I just, I don't know. I want to change that, you know. I just. Uh... I see. You're saying that. Rats got a, a lot of good PR from the Ratatouille movie, and you you wish that there was some sort of cat-style equivalent to sort of boost the profile of cats in the culinary world. Yeah, make me famous. Like Ratatouille, but my style. cat tattooey. Right, right. cat tattooey. Explain this odd behavior. Now, cat tattooey, we do have some odd behavior that we'll need you to explain. Can you tell us what's happening in this image? That's the guy from the Smashing Pumpkins on a ride at Disneyland, or it wasn't. Wasn't there a weird, a weird theme park in Atlanta? Maybe. <laughs> um, and what what is your relation to that man? Oh, I've listened to Smashing Pumpkins all the time. <laughs> Got it. I see. <laughs> Would you maybe like have some sort of Smashing Pumpkins playlist playing in your restaurant if that were possible or something like that? You know, if that's what the clients want, I would. I would listen to them. Got it. Well, the customer is always right. I hear that's one of the key elements of a successful business in the restaurateur uh, field. Well, Cat Tattoo, I'm going to open it up 
to some of our council members here to see if they have any questions, but to me it seems like you've got a good head on your shoulders. Thank you. And you've got a noble wish. You yes. know, you just want to be a successful entrepreneur. I don't see any problem with that. Oh. Uh, council, do we have any questions for Kat Tatui about her wish to become a famous... Uh, what, do you want to be like sort of like a celebrity chef, kind of like Gordon Ramsay or something? Yes, yeah, celebrity chef. I want my own movie. I I want to open up a restaurant. I want I want to take the place of all the cheesecake factories. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that sort of that actually answers one of our questions here, but maybe you could be more specific. Uh, Scholar for Christ, the council member would like to know where would your restaurant be? Presumably there'd be a first first cat tattooy restaurant where would that one be the americana mall in glendale california the americana at glendale california <laughs> absolutely a lot of foot traffic there that's a yeah. great idea um and here's a question do you have a human friend who's the son of a famous chef uh no maybe that's why i'm not as far along as as, as I am, because I it's, there is no nepotism ah, in, involved in any of this. Not a nepo, baby. <laughs> Some people really value that. And I missed an, an earlier question from council member <laughs> Sadville, who wanted to know... Oh, what? Which way? Can you, can you say it again? I couldn't hear it. Where? <laughs> Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're going to get someone on the phone here. To s okay. uh, I'm not sure who it is, but we're going to find out. If you could take one step away from me just so that you don't get exploded by when we bring in our phone. Let's bring in the phone, and I think we're going to have Gordon Ramsay on the line. Yes, celebrity chef Gordon Ramsay oh is on the phone. Go ahead and pick up the phone. We should have Gordon on the line. Gordon, are you there? Jonks, what's going on, man? Gordon, I've got a uh, aspiring celebrity chef here. Oh boy. Cat Tatooie. Cat Tatooie, say hello to Another one of these. Please. Oh, don't do that. Go back to the wide. Miss. Did you did you cut to the close up with the phone booth open? I'm so sorry. Oh god. You know what happens. This is a I help set up nightmare. the V-mix every show. I'm sorry. Cat Tatooie, is that your name? Yes. All right. You want to be a celebrity chef? Yes. What do you got for me? What's what's on the menu? Okay, I make rat fricassee. I make rat a uh, rat tartar. I make and that, and that one's really cute because that's a, a palindrome. Rat tartar. Rat rat tartar. That's cute. That's very cute. That's right. I'm laughing. I can read and um, let's uh, rat lasagna. I, Hold I, the phone. Are these all using rat as the main ingredient? Yeah. You realize that most people don't eat rats. Why wouldn't they? Because they carry disease. What? We, I eat them all the time. Me and my, my friend, my cousin, who was just here, eats them, eats them raw. My God, this could be a, a, a new type of cuisine. Because I know that in the future we're gonna have to eat bugs. Do you eat bugs? Yeah, I eat spiders. I eat caterpillars. I eat anything that crosses my path and moves. And I'm like, hey, what's that? What's that? And then I'm like, oh, got it. You could be the chef of the future, but this also could. Crumble down in flames. What is the name of your restaurant? Well, you know, I was just thinking it'd be Cat Tatooie. Just like the Rat Tatooie. I didn't really think of it. I guess it would be, um, well, Cheesecake Factory is good because it makes rats go there because of the cheese. So then it would be like the Cheesecake Factory, but it really would be the Rat Heaven. I get it. So you're trying to use the restaurant as a front to convince rats to come in so you can trap them and cook them and then thusly serve the food to the human being uh, customers. Yeah. Listen, Mr. Ramsey, with all due respect, I'm a, I'm a chef. I'm not a business, a business cat. So I'm sorry if I don't got all the answers for you right away, but I have a real passion for cooking. And if you could just help me out with this, I would really appreciate it. This is, this is one of the most fascinating calls I've ever received, Jonks. I'm going to flush the toilet now, and I'm going to draft up an email. Let's get on a Zoom, Katatui. I'd like to talk to you about the future. Wow. Oh my god. Thank what you. an opportunity. My cute kids have a gun pointed at me if I don't say yes to this. Okay. So, I'd like to say yes, and also, you can have a restaurant. Wow. Yes. Oh my goodness. At the Americana Mall? I don't. I'll make some calls. Yes. All right. Hang up the phone. 
Goodbye. No, you, no, you hang up. Oh, I was waiting for him to flush. Oh. <laughs> Step away from the phone. Step away from the phone. Oof, that gets me every time. Careful. Watch your step. Wow, Katatui. It seems that your conversation with Gordon Ramsay was a major success. That was crazy. I was like, I wish I could have gotten a screenshot of that phone call. Wow. <laughs> things, things don't work like that, do they? No, I guess not. Uh, well, uh, interesting. I guess that sort of makes your whole wish redundant now, huh? Since Gordon Ramsay's gonna help you open up a Can restaurant. That's what you were gonna wish for. Oh. Well, no, I mean, that's good. Is he for sure? Is he just... Well, it sounded like he may have been being held at gunpoint by his children, but... I mean, if you want to play it safe, you can always use your wish to make sure that you get your restaurant. Or, if you want to risk it and trust Gordon Ramsay, you could wish for something else and just assume that it's going to work out. Maybe a ball. Or, <laughs> uh, like one of those, like, uh, a little feather on the end of a string at the end of a fishing pole. Those sure, pretty sure. Good. Ball of yarn. Um, I don't do catnip anymore. Okay. <laughs> Hey, yeah. props to you. That's right. I mean, cat, Catnip Anonymous. <laughs> Good go for you. twice a week, and it, it's been working out for me. That's excellent. I'm um, proud of you. How about, uh... I don't know. I'll take a ball of yarn while I'm here, you know? Like, ball of yarn. Yeah. All right, so we're changing the wish from your own restaurant <laughs> and celebrity chef status, which we are now assuming that Gordon Ramsay is going to give to you. Yes. And we're changing the wish to a ball of yarn. Yeah, why not? Well, I'm here, you know. Might as well. Okay. All right, well, Council, uh, unless you've got any burning questions for Katatui, we're going to go ahead and get that poll up, and you'll decide whether or not we grant Katatui's wish for a ball of yarn. So we're going to get that poll up right now. Council, go ahead. Why would they say no? I'm not <laughs> sure. I To me, it seems like, yeah, it would be very mean to deny you this seemingly very easy and meager wish but you never know with the council they they just before you came here voted to commit a terrorist plot on the nation of england but it seems like they're this a runaway. yeah this one's a runaway they are supporting you cat tattooing congratulations yes do we have a ball of yarn or something that looks like a ball of yarn that we can give cat tattooing yeah, we're gonna do it. I'm just, you know, if we can make it work, well, make you're it look. Make it appear, John. Oh yes, I am. <laughs> Wibbity wobbity wonks, your wish has been granted by Jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks, your wish has been granted by Jonks. Wibbity wobbity wonks, your wish has been granted by Jonks. Here you go! Your ball of yarn. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Enjoy it! Enjoy it, Katatui! Sounds like she's having a wonderful time. Yep, that was a ball of yarn. And she's loving it. Well, folks, that was a nice, wholesome one. We didn't have to commit terrorism. We didn't have to kill anybody. I didn't have to eat anybody. Just a nice, happy cat who's going to befriend Gordon Ramsay and open up a restaurant at the Galleria in Glendale. Or the Americana, sorry. Not the Galleria. And uh, and she's got a ball of yarn. Having a ball. That's right, Fulaloof. We made the world a better place today, folks. Well, you know, on balance. I don't know where we totally landed on that. But yeah, we did something good. Anyway, folks, I think there's one last traveler making their way up my mountaintop. I think I see them coming up. Yes, yes. Hello there, traveler. Hi. Hi there. What's your name, traveler? Could you speak up, traveler? It's Phoebe Bridgers. Phoebe Bridgers. Wow. My goodness. Phoebe Bridgers. Incredible. Phoebe Bridgers, what is it that brings you to my mountaintop domain? Um, what a get! I agree, bootlegged Bart. Yeah. What brings you here? Um. Well, I did. Uh, I, I wanted. To, I did. Tiny Desk Concert. NPR's Tiny Desk Concert. Yes, I'm familiar. And I just. I don't think I nailed it. Oh! Oh no! What happened? I 
Nerves? I don't know. You got nervous? You? Come on! Phoebe Bridgers gets nervous on NPR's Tiny Desk concert? Yeah. Um, wow, she's just like us, for like real. Few, it was like a few years ago. So I just wanted like another shot at it. Wow, that is a totally reasonable and noble wish, Phoebe Bridgers. We would definitely be able to do something like that. Uh, I guess we just want to get a few questions from our council. This one feels like it's a no-brainer for me, though. Another chance at the Tiny Desk concert to really nail it. Uh, council? Well, maybe actually a, a good way to, to win over our council would be to maybe play us a little, a little tune? If you wouldn't mind. No, I'd be too nervous. Our council member Ritz to Cat is wondering if you could do a sick solo for us. No, I'm being so awkward right now. But oh, Phoebe, I stop! Can't. No, you're being very charming. No, I can't. She's quirky. Uh, we did have one question here from the council. Why are you bones? That's between me and Connor Oberst. Oh, oh okay. Interesting. Now we're getting a lot of requests for Freebird. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Did you play Freebird? <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. Well, I, I can't force you to do this, Phoebe, but I will say that our council is probably not going to look highly on, on your, on oh. granting your wish if you won't, Please. if you won't play. I mean, hey, look, Please. I know that it's hard. It's hard to get up here. Council, do you have any other, any other requests or questions for Phoebe Bridgers that don't require her to use her musical talent? And we are getting some kill, some kill messages in the council. It seems like you're losing the crowd a little bit, Phoebe. Oh, come on. Be nice. People seem really upset. People seem really upset that you're not willing to sing or play any music. Oh, come on. They're saying I that didn't they're going to kill you if you don't play music. I didn't. Okay. I've decided I won't. <laughs> okay. All right, well, Good for you. you gotta at least respect Go off. respect the the dedication. What if, I, what if I just started playing a song? That would. And I was just like, ah, I was like. That would really, I think, make a lot of people very happy. Still getting requests. I was requests. just like, ah, let's start. <laughs> Here's a request from Council Member Naked Comedy. Can she at least do "Suicide Is Painless" as beat poetry? Mike, what is that? I'm not really sure, to be honest. You mean, what is beat poetry? No. What's <laughs> up? Come on, John. I'm just being, I'm just being a little coy. You know what that, I don't know that song, though. Is Ronald that? Ronald Alden's son wrote it. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm not going to play it. Right, okay. I figured. And we are going to kill you. You've angered the council. <laughs> Now, oh Phoebe, uh, I die. know, <laughs> it's awkward. Talk about awkward. Now, Phoebe, you are... No, somebody's going to save me. You think? I think so. It seems like you've really upset a lot of people by deciding not to use your musical talent, but now would be a but, oh, life or death fair. situation. That's not fair. I'm nervous. Well, now you have good reason to be nervous, because if you don't impress the council, enough to get them to donate $10, I will have to eat you. And I don't want to do that, PB, but that's just how it goes. You could, you could eat my shit. Whoa, Whoa. Phoebe. Damn. You are saucy. I didn't realize. You've got a bit of an edge to you. Whoa, Phoebe, careful now. Remember? Kinda. I wasn't nervous that night, but if I did Tiny Desk Concert, if I like got to redo the second one, I was just having like a weird day. I see. Well, somebody's gonna save me. It seems <laughs> it seems like nobody's gonna save you. One one council member did ask if they could donate ten dollars to kill you twice. So that's kind of the vibe right now. Does anybody have a pick? Can we get a pick for Phoebe? What's Connor Overs like? Will you play if we give you a pick? I might. <laughs> okay, if we can find a pick for Phoebe, she says she might play might us play. a song. I, well, I've got these like gloves on and stuff. It's like 
Like, I honestly, it's really hard to play with, like, gloves on. I can imagine that, so. Miss Bridgers? Oh. Oh, there we go. We found a pick for Miss Bridgers. Thank you. Here we go. Okay, what song should I? Council, what song would you like to hear Phoebe play? And if we can, hopefully we can pick a song that's worth $10. The okay. bones are their dollars. Yes. Classic. So if purple I play- haze. <laughs> the request. Okay. The request is for purple haze. I know that one. Oh, perfect. Great. But I'm not gonna play it. Oh, Phoebe. Yes, yes. Charming. That's so charming. Phoebe. That is worth ten dollars. Phoebe, I. Phoebe. I'm gonna have to eat you now, Phoebe. Unless, unless someone donates, we're gonna You're say. You're not gonna eat me. I I have to. Maybe I have. Not. I don't want to, but unless someone donates ten dollars in the next, let's say, thirty seconds, hey, wait, I have wait, to eat wait. you. Shut the fuck up for a second. Okay. We got it. Oh my god. Oh my god. They did it. Whoa. Uh oh. Phoebe, was that a. Was that a little chord I just heard? A little strum? Yeah. Phoebe, you, you've been brought back to life. The opportunity now for the council to vote to to bring you back to the Tiny Desk concert for another another chance at redemption is back on the table. Yeah, and because you guys saved me, I wanted to say thanks. Wow. Thank you. Wait, that was it? That was the song? Oh, I wasn't going to do a song. Oh. I'm so nervous. It seemed like you were Stop getting... Stop pressuring me. I'm oh sorry. God. I, I'm just trying to help you, Phoebe, because it seems like the only way that the council is going to grant your wish is if you serenade them with some sort of song. Nox, no, you're, you're pressuring her a lot. It's not yeah. cool. I, look, whatever you want to do, Phoebe, that's totally your prerogative. Mm -hmm. And if look, honestly, I don't even think you need to redo your Tiny Desk concert, because we all know that you're very talented. Really? Even what happened at the Tiny Desk concert, Wait, are which... are you fucking with me? No, I'm being totally serious. A lot of people in the chat said it was really bad. Yeah, there are a lot of people who in the council, oh, I guess, saw it and hated it. You guys but... are assholes. Shut up. Sorry. And I just wanna, can Prove we... Prove them wrong, Phoebe. Okay. Prove them wrong, Phoebe. Let's update the sacrifice, thank you. <clears throat> Here we that go. That would be... What? Oh, sorry. I thought you were about to. <laughs> thought you were about to play a song. No, I was trying to remind myself how I uh, start off Kyoto when I don't have keys, but I remembered. Oh, okay, great. So are you gonna? No, I'm too nervous. Oh. Stop it. I'm sorry. No, I'm not trying to. I'm just curious. Is there anything, Phoebe, that we can do to like maybe? Yeah, uh, you can make follow you me on Twitter at okay. Phoebe Bridgers. Um, you know, support the the shows and support Boy Genius. And uh, you know my other projects. Um, I have a label now, so you, you can check that out. Got it. This was really fun. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Well, do you still wanna? I guess we can pull okay. up the. Poll I gotta now. run. No, wait. You don't wanna. I'll we're see gonna you later. Vote. You're gonna head out. Um. Well, we were gonna vote to see if we can grant your wish to do the Tiny Desk concert again. Okay, I'd love to do that. All right, let's get the poll up. Okay. Now, I can't promise that the council's gonna be on your side for this one, Phoebe, but I'm wishing you the best. It's www.phoebefuckingbridgers.com. Right. Is my real URL. Where are you performing next, Phoebe? Um. If it's not the Tiny Desk concert. Well, I'm supposed to do a show locally, actually. Um, it's uh, by a, a river or something. I don't know. This place is weird. <laughs> yeah, we're kinda out here. Yeah. All right, we're just about, yep, we got the poll up. So council members, go ahead and vote now whether or not we're gonna grant Phoebe's wish to redo her Tiny Desk concert, get some redemption. This is out of tune. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some yeah. guy just gave me this guitar while I, I was see. walking up. Crazy. Sorry about that. All right, well, I gotta go. Yeah, it's looking like they're not gonna grant your wish anyway. So. Yeah, that's okay. I'm pretty happy right. with it. All right. You well, know, I think back of how it like turned out. I'm like, that wasn't so bad. I'm just okay. hard on myself. <laughs> yeah, I think you were just kind of hard on yourself. Yeah. Well, it was really cool meeting you. All right, bye. Bye. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> All right. Wow. 
Phoebe Bridgers, everybody. Holy shit. That was awesome. I know we didn't get to grant her wish, but like we all agree that concert probably wasn't even that bad. Anyway, folks, my name is Jonks. I'm a wish granting hey, demigod. Jonks. Oh. Hey, Jonks. How's it going? Hey. Hello um, there. It's everything now shows Chris Falakian. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Hey! Get up! Rocky! Sorry, Chris. Um, thanks for having me. I waited in line for a long time to uh, get my bit out here. Okay. Um, I would like for us to win these uh, streamer award things. Wow. And yes. Great wish. We have been nominated. We are eligible. We keep saying, like, we're up for an award. Yeah, what we I mean, mean by that is we fit the rules required to submit <laughs> yes. ourselves. We are eligible. We are eligible. <laughs> we are saying, like, we're up for it, implying, what the fuck is, what are you doing? implying that maybe, like, hey. Maybe like they shortlisted us or they reached, none of that has happened. No. Someone in the Discord was like, you guys qualify And we're gonna kill this. Chris. <laughs> all right, all right. Close yeah, the yeah. That's fine, that's fine. Roll the bumper. All right, that's a five right. going to saving me. Anyway, like I was saying, no one suggested that we should get into these awards, but we need you all to go to the website and fill out our name next to those three categories. Don't waste your time on best chess streamer or whatever that shit is. There's three categories, really one, but let's try all three. I think we should be best Minecraft streamers also. Yeah, yeah, look, fill it in, knock yourself out. There's people on this website who are gonna win that, but those three, there's three we actually could fear at, and that's, I'm saved. Bring I me back out, bring him? me back out. I don't know. Bring I think I'm gonna eat him. Oh fuck, all right, it's the button anyway, let's just do it. Follow us. Uh, also, join the Discord. You can do exclamation point Discord. Discord's a very good time. Um, I, I know uh, you folks can join the Discord and follow us right now. There's some people who haven't done it yet. So go, and yeah, that's crunching. Don't make a big deal about it. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube because there's there can do the full VOD. They're on TikTok. And folks, we are 14 away from the big 1,000 on Instagram. So make some burner accounts. Get ENS to 1K. Just make some burner accounts, do what you gotta do. We're 14 away. We should hit it very soon. Yes. Tonight. Tonight. Let's make it happen. If you have to make 14 accounts, one one hero in the chat, make 14 burner accounts, follow us from all of them. Yeah. Vote for us in these awards. That's not a bit, that's real. The streamer awards are happening and we technically qualify to be voted for, to be nominated, to be voted for, to win an award! Let's Woo! game the system, But people. we need your help, so do exclamation point awards in the chat. Someone just did it. Click the link. Thank Put you, Put everything chat. now show in all the categories, just to be safe. But the main ones we're going for are the Hidden Gem Award, the Rising Star Award, and the League of Their Own Award. If we get that, I don't honestly know what'll happen, but it can only be good. <laughs> and if you want to be updated consistently on all of our various ballot stuffing enterprises, you know, you need ballot box stuffing enterprises. You need to follow our Discord. You need to join our Discord, okay? Exclamation point Discord. It's also how you do image submissions, like the explain this game that we played at some point. You know, it's a fun thing. You should check it out. You get a good morning from Creative Steve. It's a great time. All right, we've got four. We've got four of the 14. Keep them coming, folks. Keep them going. There's still people in Europe not followed us. Also, buy our merch. 
We sell this sweatshirt. We also sell this as a hoodie and a t-shirt and a long sleeve shirt and I think a mug maybe? Maybe I don't a know. sticker. Yeah. It's, sticker? There's some stuff. It's fine. Buy this. Anyway, this was a fantastic app and we could not have done it without our super amazing special guests. Cat and Brett. Cat and Brett. And Bring Brett. Brett. Standing under the Standing side. Under the side. Put this on our Instagram that everybody's oh, on the bench. No one's done that before. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. He's on the bench. Really I'm playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hell yeah. Brett and Kat, and now we are, we got six folks. We're eight oh, away. Oh boy. Keep them coming. Oh, let's take one game before we end the stream. Uh, Brett and Kat, thank you so much for joining us. This was uh, incredible work all around. Uh, wow, Brett, you are really committing. Yeah. <laughs> really impressive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ready for go ahead and head, and we get, we We're got exclamation point, yes. So follow them on Instagram. Yes. Uh, you're already Eddie. on Instagram following us. Follow these Yeah, while you're too. at it. Yeah, follow me. I'm only uh, 600 uh, away from 3,000 followers. Oh. Oh. Let's get 300 people to follow Cap right Tonight. now. Tonight. Tonight. Uh, Tonight. Uh, Cat, Tonight. Any, anything coming up you'd like to plug? Yes. Yeah. If you're in the LA area and Soon it'll be live stream. Come to the Lyric Hyperion every other Thursday at 9.30 p.m. The next show is fe on February 9th. I'm looking for a co-host and I, I'm trying to find one on Craigslist. You know, there's some yeah. good people applying. So right. finish watching our show Thursday at 9 and then yeah. book it over to Lyric Hyperion. Yeah, it's not even that far. Plenty of time. Watch it while yeah. parked outside. Not far from yeah. the viewer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You all live right next to the lyric. Yeah, yeah. right? right? All, yeah. all 80 of you. In yeah. Honda. Watch our show while driving your car to her show. Okay. Yeah. Brett, what do you have to tell the people about? Any plugs, shows, or just messages you want to let the public know? Yeah, I got a new podcast coming out with The Best Show. It's on Sharpling. Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys will like that. Yeah. It'll be a, a little surprise. Um, and I do a show at Little Secret in Hollywood if you're in the LA area. Uh, the last Friday of every month, we're doing one this month, and then I'm, um, I'm up for a streaming award. Whoa! Oh, you uh, too? For yeah. Big time. What? Uh, for comedy, uh, so really vote for me, it's at Phoebe fucking Bridgers Dark. Luckily, we do not overlap. We are not a comedy yes, stream, not comedy. so that's not a problem. Um, they were near funny. Wait, what, what kind of is it? Uh, I'm up for that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, so vote for Brad and watch our show crumble and join us on Monday for an all new episode of Never Give Up. We got on Monday. It's going to be uh, Up Wanted with, with Jesse Mortar Ritt. It's going to come on through and be hilarious. Maybe one of the Babe Motel games. So Only one way to find out. That's to tune in back here Monday night, 7 p.m. Join the Discord to get updates on when that happens. Follow us here. Follow us on Instagram. And we are going to raid the space. Fuck yeah. We're sending you over Woo! to the PA space. The kings and queens of Altadena. Check them out, but remember, do not like them more than us. Please That's don't. Right. These are your second favorite LA based comedy stream. That's right. We need this. So so Show them some love. So it stands for public displays about the community, but did anyone else think that it meant public displays of affection? That's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Ah, ah, oh, Grant, shit. that's really go? funny. Uh, oh shit! Oh, 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 oh shit! Hey, Cam, what's up? Oh, 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 that was scary. Subscribe to the show so that we can learn object permanent.